I'm in the E46 M3. This is a 2006 model, so this is the very last production year for this car. And uh, this one, as I've mentioned in other videos, this is pretty decked out in terms of equipment. And that is a convertible. So I guess if there's one mark against it, it's that. It's not the most preferred or desirable um, model that you can buy in the E46. The coupe is the creme de la creme. And the more the more packages and particularly the, uh, the competition package is pretty ideal. CSL is going to be such a rarity that it's not likely that you're going to run into one of those, uh, particularly here in the States. But there are a lot of replicas out there. And if you've got a competition and you make a replica or a tribute car out of yours, I would imagine that would bring more money. People just want the complete look. They want the performance uh, and to be as close to that purity as the CSL as they can get. Obviously, I would never accomplish something like that with a convertible. You can't change the look of the car. And these cars have so much possibility in terms of how you can dress it. And they just look great no matter what you do in most cases. Uh, I think sometimes people overdo the styling, but you know, to each their own. I think that's the beauty of this car is that you you make it whatever it needs to be for you, but at the core of it, the performance is just astounding. I constantly come back to this car along with the 993 in terms of would I get rid of them or not because they're just such great driver's cars. Over the last month or so of driving this car, I've come to the realization that it is one of the best driver's cars that I've ever been in. From its usability, its practicality, its functionality, and then the performance on top of that. There's not really a lot that touches it. There are a lot of options, but it's just, it's a bit unique in its own right that it offers so much of those considerations that it makes a hard argument to just get rid of it all together. But get rid of it all together is what I've been contemplating doing. As I mentioned previously, it is for sale. However, if it doesn't sell for what I think it should, I'll hold on to it a little longer. And that's not a bad thing because that means I get to drive it a little longer. Mileage wise, I'm not all that stressed about it or fussed because it's, you know, sub 75,000 miles. I bought the car with 66,000 miles. So it's, you know, encroaching on that 10,000 mile increase over the course of, let's say it's been now almost, if not seven, eight years. It will definitely be missed if and when it sells. But, you know, eye on the prize, bigger things, more to come. Um, I've had some really fun times in this car, both by myself and then driving with friends. Love to have a coupe 
and to be quite honest with you I would really love to experience that SMG setup and I know that's a very weird thing to say when you think about how catastrophic it could be and how clunky it is just not the best experience with one of these cars but I think it's all relative to how you want to experience the car Chris as I mentioned uh, previously that I, I drive with a lot his car is an SMG and I think when you understand the way that the SMG works um, I think it becomes a little more appetizing I think it's easier to accept what it is and what it isn't so I think you know if the opportunity came to buy one that was just a little bit dogged out um, a beater and then just turn it into what I want it to be I think the engines for the most part they're pretty solid uh, in their ability to stand the test of time and a beating from you know people who love on them properly and people who don't or don't know how and they still will survive or you can bring it back to former glory if it's you know not completely blown up and if you know how to rebuild it even better um, but I would definitely love to have that experience uh, and just kind of trick one out maybe make it a track car or just you know hot rod it and just make it way more than it needs to be for the regular roads i think that would be a lot of fun uh, kind of like the project i talked about on the 993 of you know maybe giving that engine just a little bit of that singer esh performance uh just you know doing some things to just get a little bit more out of that air-cooled engine uh, but not taking it to the extreme i you know i think a, a 325 horsepower 993 it's probably a pretty spirited exciting and, and more than you need um, sports car uh, but all in all uh, this has been one of the best cars I've ever owned one of the best cars I've ever driven even if I haven't uh, if I hadn't owned it um, so yeah I, I'm, I'm very pleased with that I'm gonna share with you real quick though there's one thing that I did to the car most recently um, as you know I've kind of started to think about its age and the things that I'm gonna to have to keep in mind and consider, uh, or that I would if I were to keep the car longer, is uh, the same situation, the same sort of situation is happening in the RX-7 where, well, bits are falling off. Parts are starting to uh, deteriorate. Their quality over time just becomes less of what it was when it was new. You know, plastics age, um, and when they do, depending on the environments that they're in, they start to become, you know, a bit brittle. Um, the adhesives, for instance, on a lot of these parts that are glued together, well, it'll start to, you know, lose its ability to hold these parts uh, as they were originally produced. One case in point, my trim here on the dash, this piece here, um, you could probably see some of those imperfections, maybe if I try to angle the cam camera a little. Um, this part is a little warped because that entire piece became detached. So this is actually a uh, aluminum piece on top of a plastic piece. And it's got that, you know, adhesive on the back that, you know, holds it together. And it's pretty strong and it lasts a pretty good while. I mean, you think about it, it's an 06 car. And it only just started coming up on the very end. And I kind of thought, well, okay, if it's starting to come up, maybe I'll put some of that Gorilla Tape on the back. Well, I tried that and it wouldn't stay down. Uh, and so I finally uh, endeavored to take the whole thing off. It's a pretty easy process. I got a tip from someone on YouTube about using a fork and wedging your fork in underneath and just prying it loose. They all just snap in and it's a pop, but you gotta be careful taking it out because you don't wanna break the clips that are in back. Uh, they will come loose as well. So there's a slotting that happens once this is off for the pin just slides in and locks. So you gotta be careful when you take it off not to break any of the plastic pieces that receive that pen uh, because they will come out of the dash as well. Uh, but also just don't, uh, you know, just don't force anything loose uh, hastily. Take your time on it. Uh, but at any rate, I took this off thinking that I could go ahead and just remove the rest of the, the upper piece, the aluminum from the plastic base. And the glue here didn't wanna let go. It wasn't quite ready to uh, release yet whereas on the end it was. And so I started you know, having this piece move a bit and bend because it's very thin. Um, as a result, I thought, okay, this is gonna be crap when I'm done. I went ahead and ordered replacement pieces. It goes all the way across the dash. You, you can get these anywhere. If you just Google search dash trim piece E46, you'll find it. And there are a lot of different variations. You can get some that are more of a Titan 
which is less of a you know brushed look. I accidentally somehow hit Titan instead of the brushed. I got it from Turner Motorsports. They were you know really good about taking it back. And the reason why I sent it back was that as much as I wouldn't have mind that little darker looking trim, I think that might be a little better. The door cards have that same thing as well as this piece. And I didn't order those, but that would have been another hundred or so uh, bucks for maybe a little over a hundred for this and those two pieces on the doors. Um, and I didn't want to go through changing all that out. Once I had actually got this off, I cleaned off the residual blue that was there. I was able to clean that plastic base a little bit more. There was glue under there still and the Gorilla Tape wouldn't adhere to it very well. So I, I scraped all that glue off. It took me probably about 45 minutes to an hour, but it was even longer to get the rest of this off because it kept bending. It's so thin. You just, you know, as you try to pull it apart, it just bends, it's so pliable. But that said, once I'd finished, I had assumed, and I hadn't opened my box yet for the parts that I ordered, I'd assume I had a backup, so I was a little less concerned about, well, if it gets warped, I was like, okay, whatever, I'll just toss it. But as I got back into it and putting it together, I was able to actually warp it back in place, just applying pressure. I used a, um, I had a piece of, uh, had like a rolling pin that you do uh, cookies with, and I just went over it a few times and just pressed it. And it kind of turned out almost perfect or almost as good as it was before. It had dings in it because like I said, it's very thin. So if you were to hit this with your ring, you could put a little divot in it. So it's it's very, very thin and easily dented. But not needless to say, I was able to get that sorted out, put that back on. I used the Gorilla Tape instead of adhesive and it's actually holding pretty, pretty well. I had about three days to watch it before. I put it back on to make sure that it wasn't coming apart. And so once I realized it was good, I sent those parts back because I didn't want to change the color. I do have tires for the rear that I'm going to put on the car. I'm noticing that the fronts, I mean, I was going to do the fronts as well. I just ordered the rear earlier because I started acting like a hooligan and just sliding around in the car. Everything else for the most part is pretty good. This part broke on me. Uh, it's the actual, this piece, and it just, literally has well i'm moving it now as you can see it's just falling apart it just fell apart even more well there you go old brittle pieces falling apart that's exactly what i'm talking about but again this is one of the things you deal with when you have old cars these kinds of things start to go and it's a matter of how much of it do you want to maintain and i think for a car that i'm now kind of at that I kind of, I think I'm at that sunset of uh, of stewardship over it. It's like, okay, there are other cars I do need to experience before the days are done for, for driving. And, you know, you start or you never start. And I think it's time to start moving on to those cars. This has been great. And I do hope that it does, you know, I hope I can sell it for a price that I feel comfortable with. I'm not too deep in it. So, and I'm not trying to make a killing. I don't see this market. Unless you have a very low mileage E46, and, and then the more desirable years are going to be post 2002. You know, those are the cars that don't have a lot of those initial things uh, that you've heard about, you know, that plague these cars. And people start asking about what about this and what about that? The 06 obviously is the one with probably the least concern. Uh, 05 as well. But yeah, uh, I think anything after 02, a better car. 04 through 06 is obviously going to be probably where your sweet spot is. Again, low mileage. Uh, I've seen cars with upwards of 115, 120,000 miles still demanding, you know, a pretty reasonable amount. Like, you know, I see them listed for 20s. Um, some people are being a little cheeky, but I think when you have a coupe, you kind of have to bite that and decide, do I want one? Especially if the owner has, you know, done the diligence of keeping it up, has done all of the replacement parts that need replacing, has maintained it, you know, whether they've tracked it or not. Uh, you know, the things that are going to matter to you when you buy the car, I think for most part, um, you know, they're just mechanical things you need to think about because these cars were made to run hard. And if they were run hard, part of that expensive ownership prospect for these high end cars is the repairs that you need to do or the maintenance you need to do needs to be done. And when you do them, the car will last forever. Uh, but if you neglect them, then those are things that become problematic. And that's the stuff that makes it onto the, the internet. You know, this is a problem. Well, there's some things that they tell you just to look out for. And then there's some things that are unexpected and you just have to adjust to those and do what you have to do to keep your car where you want it to be. Um, and I think when you find a seller who has done that, 
then the price point becomes a little bit more relative, a little bit more reasonable for what you're gonna get out of the experience. These are probably some of the best cars ever to hit the road. They're just fantastic all the way around. So um, yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be sad, but it's been a great car. We shall see what happens. Like I said, I'm not in a hurry, um, nor am I under a pressure situation, but part of my mind is like, I wanna get things moved so I can start working towards what that next thing is. Um, so we shall see what happens, all right? Till the next time, I will drive, peace.